Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Yellow Alert where we take a look at some of the dev posts uh, that we've had over the past week um, and just uh, break them down for you so you guys don't have to search for them. Um, so there's not been a huge amount over the past few weeks, obviously given the holiday period and kind of everything that's been going on. Um, been a busy time um, for people and their families, so kind of less dev posts. Um, but we picked out a few which uh, are interesting, hopefully, and uh, hopefully you'll find them interesting anyway. Um, so um, don't forget to comment for your chance to win that Nomad. Uh, if you want to win a Nomad, hashtag giveaway in your comment um, and uh, every unique comment, so one comment per video will be counted towards a giveaway. Uh, so obviously uh, the more videos you comment on in the month, the better your chances. And uh, I think that is pretty much it. So uh, let's dive straight in, shall we? Okay, so first up we had a original post from Walter Bishop and it says at particle effects team regarding nebulae and it says how far are we away from and then you'll see a video in the original post um, which basically shows some nebulae which have basically been rendered um, by a guy called Tune um, and uh, they look incredible absolutely incredible um, far far away from what we've got in Star Citizen at the moment but obviously for good reason which is explained by Medic CIG and it says ah yes Tunes Nebula work is truly amazing and he does make some great videos and renders so there's a couple of issues that we have to balance uh, when we make Nebulae the VDB file size and authoring Tune the author of the video you linked from what I've read uses particles in his scenes and not VDBs so what you're seeing in the video isn't a VDB but a vast amount of particles that make it appear volumetric. I suspect this is done, and I would do the same, because to create a VDB high enough resolution would break even the most powerful of machines and be ridiculous to handle. When it comes to authoring, creating a nice looking gas cloud in any sense isn't easy. Even with our amount of tools, it does get a bit tricky. As you can't really use traditional modeling techniques, but would need to use a combination of simulations and math functions to get the result that they were looking for. Combining the two aspects that are needed to author our gas clouds, we try to get as much detail as we can whilst trying to maintain as small a file size as possible. And that's difficult to handle as detail doesn't necessarily mean high file size. As for your question, I'm the lucky duck that gets to look at new ways of creating better nebulae in Houdini FX. Because Tune doesn't go into great depth in his creation process, I'm having to explore different ways to make something similar, whilst taking into account our art direction and what has worked for us in the past. I can't say when this will happen and when I will crack the problem, but I am looking at more complex methods such as fractals that uh, Key Smasher pointed out, as well as building and or refining our simulation tools. Also, bit tricky when scientists don't truly know how nebulae are formed. I asked, I didn't like the answer, I got sad. <laughs> so uh, there you go, that's uh, that's uh, Medic CIG's answer. Um, I think it's a pretty good answer, I mean he's kind of broken down exactly what we needed to know. The long and short of that is that at the moment the way in which CIG do their nebula um, is different to the way that you see it in that video. Uh, that uses millions upon millions upon millions of particle effects which just isn't um, something that a game could handle. Um, so they have to transfer that into a, a format that would work um, for streaming into PCs, you know, for running a game. Um, I mean, I've rendered scenes similar to this um, and just the render process took like 15, 24, 36 hours, depending on how vast it was. So, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy stuff, um, but it's good to know that they're working on it. Um, and it's nice to see that the person whose job it is to make these look amazing is here telling us. So, you know, once again, a step up from CIG with their devs. Okay, so next up, we've got an, a response from Wayne at CIG. Uh, this is to do with the uh, CCC Aves armor update. Um, so you may remember that there were people who were missing their armor parts, essentially. Um, 
and um, they, they came with the Asperia concept Talon um, and a lot of people didn't have the armor. So he says, hello everyone, the issue of the missing or incomplete CCC Aves armor that came with the Asperia concept Talon should now be resolved and all three pieces of the Aves armor should now be present on your accounts. Uh, so basically, I would take a look now, see if you've got that armor. If you haven't, maybe, you know, contact them, let them know, um, but it should be resolved. So next up, we had a post from the infamous, the slightly less bearded and less crazy looking Disco Lando. Uh, and it says, topics needed, calling all devs. Hi all, we're putting out the call for topics you'd like to see covered in calling all devs when it returns next month. While you can still submit specific questions, we're also interested in general development areas you'd like to see explored on the show. Recent examples of general topics for calling all devs include death of a spaceman, vehicle features, core tech updates, future of the Stanton system, player versus player, road to salvage, and creature creation. So please submit your suggestions below and don't forget to vote up the ones you want to see addressed the most. So the posting guidelines for this are uh, only make replies to the original post, only one question or topic per post, keep it succinct, boil it down to the thing you really want to know. It helps avoid confusion and begets better answers usually. Do not direct a question to a specific developer. Do not submit one question, get votes with that question and then reword the question or replace it with another one entirely. Do not make use of special formatting in an attempt to draw more attention and therefore more votes to your question, i.e. bold, h1, etc. No when questions. No post launch or release questions. This is a program dedicated to the continuing development of the game and focuses on the immediate and near term future of the project. Think three to six months out. No pictures. Make it easy for people to find the question they want to vote on without having to scroll through pictures. Questions should be related to the development of our game and focused on topics for our developers to answer. Post violating these guidelines or the subjects of the broadcast may be deleted, as may the inline replies, and have fun with it. So there you go. So if you've got any ideas that you would like to see for a call in all devs, uh, then definitely jump into this thread and uh, voice your opinions. Uh, let them know because, um, you know, we'll only end up with a bunch of crap if you guys don't do it. So, uh, get in there. Okay, and finally, uh, we've got a response from Ulf from CIG. And this is to do with the Design Illuminalia Sweater Contest. Uh, so it says, the winners of our Design Illuminalia Sweater Contest have been crowned. We'll be reaching out to the victors in the next few days to award their prizes. Thank you so much for everyone who designed a sweater and entered. And of course, huge congratulations to the winners. So first place was uh, Naima which I'm pretty sure we've featured on Spectrum Drama. Uh, second place went to Loon Lee, and third place went to Y Stella, I think. Uh, and um, you can check out the winning designs below. So there's three pictures. They're, they're quite cool. Um, I, I, very, I, I do like the first one, which I believe is the winner. Um, very, very, very good. Um, the, you can see the kind of style and the design that the, the first and third place have kind of gone for that. Um, I don't know if it's Starfleet, I can't remember where I've seen it before, but it's definitely the in fashion for people upon uh, some sort of a Starfleet or, you know, a, a large ship of some description. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very good. Um, I'm proud of you all. Um, but yeah, for those who obviously entered and didn't win, don't worry. You know, I mean, we once created a Christmas sweater. It didn't go down well. <laughs> and if you want to see that, check out our merch below. It's still there, I think, and it's 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 utterly hideous. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. So uh, yeah, congratulations to everyone who won. Um, and that is pretty much it. Um, there's not really much else to report on at the moment. As I said, it's quite quiet um, given the time of the year, but it, it will pick up again over the next few weeks and hopefully we'll have a few more uh, posts to bring to you. Um, but that's pretty much it. So yeah, thanks everyone very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, hit that like button and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. Um, you know, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. So, you know, it really does help us out if you can do that um, and hit that like button. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because I have to tell you that otherwise the world will end. Um, yes. And uh, don't forget to comment for your chance to win that Nomad. Hashtag giveaway.
I repeat, hashtag giveaway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, good luck to everyone, by the way, who enters the competition. And uh, yes, that's it. So uh, have a great week, everyone. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.